Do you ever read the Bible and you say, man, there is no way that this verse is talking to me? Well, my friend, God's word is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. And in today's Proverbs devotional, we're going to read a verse, and I promise you, God is speaking directly to you. My name is Caleb. This is the owner's manual. Let's do this. All right, let's jump right into it. We're kicking off today's devotion companion with the first verse of the first chapter of the book of the Proverbs. The Bible says, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. You might be thinking, that's a kind of weird verse to be doing a Bible study on, but hang in there with me. The Bible says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. That includes an introductory verse. And the Bible says all scripture is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. I'm not going to try to drag out all of those attributes from this one verse, but here's what we will read in Proverbs 1, verse 1, the beginning, it says the Proverbs of Solomon. What I want you to get today is you have a message. You have a testimony. You have something to say. You say, well, my life has been boring. My testimony isn't that great or I'm not that good a speaker. God has commissioned you with taking the gospel to every person. He died for them. He wants to save them. And it is your responsibility to take the gospel to them. God is empowering you even through this verse, the Proverbs of Solomon. That was Solomon's gift from God to other people. And you have a message. You have the gospel. You have your life story. You have your life's testimony. And God wants to use that to be a blessing to other people. The second thing I want you to see here is the Bible says the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David. In addition to our message, we also have a past. We have a heritage. What was Solomon's heritage? Well, he was the son of David. David was the man after God's own heart. David was the man who killed Goliath. David was this great king of Israel, and he was also a failure. He was also someone who committed adultery with someone, had that woman's husband murdered, and then tried to cover it up and then tried to justify it. In fact, Solomon is the son of that adulterous relationship. This is his heritage. This is his lineage. This is his past. If you could imagine someone maybe being traumatized by recognizing how his family became together in the first place, and yet that didn't hinder him or stop him from doing what God called him to do. And no matter what's happened in your past and no matter what's holding you down, I don't even care what you were involved with this morning or last night. God wants to use you, not because of your past, in spite of your past. And he will use that past combined with the power of the gospel to bring about a glorious result. And the third thing I want you to see here, it says, son of David, king of Israel, you're not a king. I'm not a king. But if you have your faith and trust in Jesus Christ as your savior, you're a child of the king. You've been born again and you have an incredible position in the eyes of God. You ought to live like a king. You ought to live like a king where God's put you. Wherever it is, you say, I'm just a kid in my family. You're a child of God and your Israel is your home. You say, well, I'm a man and I have a wife and I have children. You're a child of God, you're a child of the king and your Israel is your home. You say, well, not married, no kids, but I go to school and I have this job. You're a child of the king, live like a prince, like a child of God and minister and lead the people that God has placed under your influence. You say, I'm not a leader and I don't have people under influence around me. I promise you, if you know Jesus Christ as your savior, you are a leader. And there are people waiting for you to take up your rightful place as king in your Israel. Go lead, go be mightily used of God. And so my challenge for you today is I want you to think about your testimony, think about your past, think about the life that God has led you to. And I want you to thank God for that life. It is a gift from God. And then what I want you to do is speak to your spiritual counselor, your mentor, whoever your accountability partner is and tell them, this is my testimony. This is my life. And I want you to help me pray and ask God to use my testimony in my Israel to be a blessing to those people that God has placed under my influence. God, I know that uh, you've given us the promise that you will work all things together for good. And it's easy to quote it, but it's not so easy to believe it and even harder to live it. And I ask that you would enable us, Father, today 
to live for you and to claim that truth and live it out to our Israel. We thank you so much for loving us. Please bless us and make us a blessing. We ask this in Jesus Christ's name, amen. On behalf of the Owner's Manual, my name is Caleb. Thank you so much for watching and listening. I hope you turn in tomorrow for another daily proper devotional. God bless you.